A new commandment I give to you that you love one another even as I have loved you that you also love one another this passage from the scripture, from the gospel we have heard today, is the central message of Christianity. Because Jesus continues by this all men, all women, everybody will know that you are my followers that you belong to me, that you share in my life. By this will they know it, if you have love for one another. My dear friends, I must be honest with you. Today, I would have preferred not to be here to preach to you. Today, I would have preferred to lock myself up in my chapel before God alone to weep and to pray. To weep and to pray for my nation where darkness has descended to weep and pray for my church that is being stifled out of existence in the world and also in Nigeria. To weep and pray for Deborah Emmanuel who was killed because she found herself in a part of Nigeria she thought was home, but it wasn't. To weep and to pray for my brother and friend, Bishop Matthew Hassan Kuka, the world acclaimed voice of the voiceless, who has now become soft target for those same voiceless people who see him as part of their problem rather than as part of the solution. To weep and to pray for the poor, miserable murderers of Deborah who have been left uneducated and unemployed deliberately so that they can be manipulated, brainwashed, and instrumentalized for political ends by religious bigots and political egoists. To weep and to pray for people who should be leaders, religious leaders, who enjoy being ambivalent in the condemnation of evil when it is perpetrated by one of them. To weep and to pray for our political leaders under whose watch this nation has crumbled and they keep looking for whom to blame for the mess in which they have put all of us. I would have preferred not to be standing before you here now to tell you about love. 
the liturgy of today instructs every Christian and every Christian preacher to reflect on the essence and the meaning of Christianity, the love we should have for one another. But how can you preach love in Nigeria? How can you preach love in a country where violence has become a rule? Where hatred and intolerance have become norms rather than exception. Where corruption has become a culture and a tradition. Where impunity has become law. Where the government feels so helpless that it is now appealing even to religious leaders to talk to non-state actors so that they will not make this security situation in our country worse. Those who are the words of the Vice President of Nigeria while he was speaking to all Catholic bishops of West Africa gathered in a meeting in Abuja, he addressed us two Tuesdays ago. And we are wondering how a presidency could publicly admit that they have lost control, that they have left the ground so free and the country so lawless and so stateless that non-state actors now take over the entire country not only in Sokoto and Kaduna and on the highway between Kaduna and Abuja or between Abuja and Lokoja and Ansoka but throughout the country. How can you preach love in Nigeria? In a country where those who want to follow the rule of law are regarded by the rest as weak. We are, how can you preach love in Nigeria? In a country that claims not to have any state religion, but constantly places a religion in an unhealthy advantage over others. How can you preach love in Nigeria? where a few people have collected what belongs to everybody and they are doing with it whatever they please. How can I tell Nigerian students to love their neighbor, love their country, love their leaders, when their parents have paid their school fees and they are sitting at home? In a country where the ruling party, within a space of less than two weeks, can rake in from 27 persons 26.3 billion naira collected as fees for presidential nomination forms. And the same ruling party is unable to finance our education properly such that our teachers are at home and our students are roaming the streets. How can you preach love in Nigeria? In a country where members of ASU, hear me well, members of the academic staff union of universities in Nigeria have collaborated with INEC to install misfits in power in this country because they have collected money. All the electoral officers who installed the present ruling class in Nigeria are professors of our universities, members of ASU. And 
INEC chairmen for many decades have been members of ASU. And whom are we blaming? How can you preach love in Nigeria? In a country where forgiveness is regarded as weakness. In a country where when you bring the light, you are accused of exposing darkness. In a country where when you love, you are seen as being stupid. I would have preferred to stay at home and weep and pray for this country. But I can't. In the new church, young church, the company of the believers of Christ after his resurrection, ascension, and the descent of the Holy Spirit. In that church that depended on charismatic leaders empowered by the Holy Spirit, every one of them felt he or she had the responsibility of sharing with others the experience of the love of the risen Christ. St. John tells us in his first letter, chapter 1, what we have seen, what we have heard, what we have touched with our hands. That is what we share with you, so that our joy may be in you, and our joy may be complete. And that new group, young, weak, insisted they were tortured, imprisoned, and killed, but they wouldn't stop. Unjustly treated, just like their master, I find no fault in this man, yet he was condemned. We find nothing wrong with these people, yet let us flog them. Stephen was killed, brutally stoned to death like Deborah. Stephen, as he was dying, did not tell Paul who supervised the killing Saul. He didn't curse Saul. He could have told Saul, Okwe Hurugobo Saul, Lotasus. And he had reasons to do it. He had a reason to curse Saul. You will never die a happy death. He who kills by stoning will be killed by stoning. You authorized my death. You will meet death very soon. No. While Paul, Saul was stoning Stephen to death, Stephen was praying for his conversion. Lord, don't hold this against them. They are ignorant. They don't know what they are doing. Like, like his master. And today we are hearing of the same Saul that has become Paul. Now going around being persecuted himself, putting his life on the line for the same truth that he wanted to destroy. Nigerian Christians, I want to tell you, our response cannot be revenge and violence. It will not work. The only thing that works is love. Sometimes when you are preaching you feel that people are not even listening to you because you don't see the difference in their lives. But good things take time. The seed of Christianity, the seed of love takes time. There are difficult, difficult moments. 
There are difficult terrains, there are challenging moments, like the one we have in Nigeria now, when it is very difficult to be a Christian. Yesterday, I found something posted on the WhatsApp status of Ogam Fadapolinus, which consoled me. Don't let someone else's bitterness take away your sweetness, the pimp of Christian identity. Don't let someone else's bitterness take away your sweetness, the pimp of Christian identity. Love is sweet, but it's painful. I said it two years ago, and some criticized me, including my priests, that what I was saying was just a palliative and pacifist that would not solve any problem. But my religion has not taught me any other thing except what I keep saying. And that was, if our enemies succeed in making us hate them, then they would have conquered us completely. Because Christianity without love, including the love of the enemy, can be any other religion but not Christian. To be a Christian is to love, and to love in a hard way, difficult way, Jesus says, I'm giving you a new commandment. Now, what is new about this, Lord? We know from the book of Deuteronomy, from the book of Leviticus, that God the Father commanded us to love one another as we love ourselves. Yet, after having instituted the Holy Eucharist, the sacrament of self-sacrifice, self-giving love. He tells his disciples, I'm giving you a new commandment. There are two things difficult to understand here. One is the newness. Second is the commandment. Can you command love? Italians say you can't command the heart. Al cuore non si comanda. No. You may not be able to command selective love. That love that feels irresistibly attracted to what will be beneficial. The love that easily turns to hatred, even in marriages. There is also a natural tendency in the human being to love because we are created in the image of God. So how can God command love? Yes, in commanding love, God is reminding us, live according to your true identity if you want to be called my son, my daughter. That is the command aspect of it. If you want your real identity to appear as my son and as my daughter, then you have to love another person. What is new about it, says St. Augustine, is that in that new expression in Christ and self-giving love, Jesus was offering what God promised to the Israelites in the book of the prophet Jeremiah, chapter 31, verse 31. The day is coming when I will make a new covenant with the people of Israel. And at the Last Supper, in Luke chapter 22, verse 20, Jesus, having given his, the cup to the apostles, 
and having told them that it was the cup of the blood that he was pouring for our salvation tells them now this is the cup this is the blood of the new covenant which Jeremiah spoke about what is new about it is that it is no longer the blood of another animal it is the blood of Jesus himself the person who offers himself for the love of his brothers and in the context of the institution of the Eucharist in John's gospel because the discussion that is started after the washing of the feet goes from chapter 13 and it ends in chapter 17 of John's gospel with the prayer he said for his apostles but then in John chapter 13 15 verse 13 he tells them no greater love can a person have for their friends than to lay down one's life for the friends. Now, I am loving you in such a way as to lay down my life for you. And what is new about this commandment is that you have to love the way I love for you to be true children of God. This is the vocation of Christians. This is the identity of a Christian. It is difficult to be a Nigerian, uh, be a Christian in Nigeria now. Not just because in the pres under the present government Christians are discriminated against. Not just because Christians in this country now suffer injustice and even death and governments do nothing about that. Leah Sharibu is still in detention because she is a Christian. Well, what makes it more difficult to be a Christian in Nigeria now is that witnessing to love does not seem to find echo among the people. Being a true Christian is no longer regarded as a value. Many of us want to see Christianity as an association of people who protect their own interests. Why not? And as a group that prays so that God may solve all our problems. Why not? Those things may be part of Christianity, but not the essence. And until we learn to be true Christians in this country, there is no way that the light of Christ can chase away the darkness in Nigeria. The book of Revelation tells us There will be a making all things new. A new heaven and a new earth where there will be no tears, no mourning. And if you meditate on this statement, you will realize that new earth, that new Jerusalem that comes down from heaven can only be experienced at the end of time. Not now. But once in my prayer, I asked the Lord, Lord, yes, I know. The new heaven and new earth will come only at the end of time. The new Jerusalem, when there will be no weeping and no tears, will come at the end of time. The society where there will only be joy and love will come at the end of time. But please, is there any way that we can experience a little bit of this, even now on earth, in my country, Nigeria? And he answered me, yes. Yes. A bit. A foretaste of the new Jerusalem. 
of the new heaven and new earth of the society where there will be less weeping more joy is possible in Nigeria in the measure in which Nigerian Christians decide to be more Christian better Christians live more out of love than out of personal interest lost for greed lost for vengeance as we pray for Deborah we also pray for all the victims of intolerance at all levels of hatred of violence but we also pray for the perpetrators of this violence and we pray for all Nigerian Christians that we may witness to the love of Christ, especially in the face of so great a contradiction. Ibain, Paul and Ebana Basa Gariko, Sukonondo Kajishiki, Nahohod, Manemadayale, is we home with our neck, Jesus, Makanahohod. I even that poster washer. Ongo gyo zanyo zene me karia gagari da gwagdu nu unu jishike na oguba agala sneji kugu mogno ko na agbanega hafu ije nganga na akizirie oguba na gagboso 